Good evening, you're watching the news from the Sultan of Oman Television. First, the headlines. Syrian government shelling of a rebel-held town kills 31 people in northeast Damascus. Israeli troops lock down the occupied West Bank's most populous city of Hebron. And Bangladeshi forces storm a Dhaka restaurant to end a hostage siege by heavily armed militants. Those were the headlines and now the news in detail. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos has sent a cable of greetings to His Excellency President Alexandra Lukashenko of Belarus on his country's National Day. Syrian government shelling of a rebel-held town killed 31 people, including two medics today, as a two-year local truce broke down after suspected Al-Qaeda militants killed a captured regime pilot. The bombardment struck the town of Jairud, 60 kilometers northeast of Damascus, where the army said the rebel killed the pilot after he was forced to eject yesterday. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said today's attack was the first bombardment of the town in at least two years. Several government aircraft have been shot down by rebels or crashed because of technical faults since the civil war erupted five years ago. Dozens of local truces have been broken between the mid era of the armed forces fighting in Syria's increasingly complex civil war. But a nationwide ceasefire between government forces and the rebel brokered by Moscow and Washington in February has been repeatedly violated by both sides. The civil war, which began with peaceful protests in 2011, has killed more than 280,000 people and driven millions from their homes. Israeli troops locked down the occupied West Bank's most populous city of Hebron and surrounding villages today after two Israelis were killed in Palestinian attacks nearby. The crackdown comes amid a flare-up in nine months of deadly violence as the end of the Muslim fasting month of Ramadan looms after the major diplomatic prayers called for urgent steps by both sides to revive the Maribyrn peace process. Trips closed the all exit roads from the Hebron exit from the main northern one through the town of Halhul towards Jerusalem. The army announced yesterday that it would close off the Flashpoint city and deploy two additional Balachians to the area. The measures were described as the most substantial steps on the grounds since 2014 when Israeli forces carried out a huge search operations in the southern West Bank for three young hikers abducted and later found murdered by Palestinian militants. The army was said around 80 of the attacks on Israeli have been carried out by Palestinians from the Hebron area. Libyan forces fighting to free the city of Sirte from Daesh groups have been surrounded a conference hall in the area still held by militants after airstrikes and clashes that killed at least three pro-government fighters. Forces allied with Libya's unity government began to campaign two months ago to the first search of the death after militants took advantage of the fighting between rival factions to gain territory and control the coastal city last year. Three fighters were killed and more than 30 injured during the fighting yesterday after the militants were driven out of the residential 700 districts in fierce clashes involving rockets, marchers and gun battles. Commanders of the forces, who are mainly from the nearby port city of Misrata, said remaining militants are in an area around Sartre's or the Guti conference complex and nearby hospital, but the snipers and landmines have slowed progress.
Bangladeshi forces stormed an upscale Dhaka restaurant early today to end the hostage taking by heavily armed militants. Six of the attackers were killed and 15 captives rescued, including foreigners. The military say 20 hostages were killed during the 10-hour standoff, and a survivor's father said the attackers spared people who could recite verses from the Quran. The attack marks an escalation in militants' violence that has hit the Muslim-majority nation with increasing frequency in recent months. Previous attacks involved matchet-wielding men signing out individuals, activists, foreigners and religious minorities. About 35 people were taken hostage last night when gunmen stormed the popular restaurant in Dhaka's Gulshan area, a diplomatic zone. Two police officers were killed at the start of the attack. At least nine civilians have been killed in separate attacks in Afghanistan, including a suicide bombing and a mass shooting. Afghan officials said today that at least two civilians were killed after a suicide bomber on a motorbike targeted a local tribal elder who escaped unhurt in the eastern Nangar province. Eleven others were wounded in the attack, which took place in Jalalabad, the, cap the provincial capital. Meanwhile, in southern Kandahar province, unknown gunmen shot and killed seven civilians. The victims included four men and three women. On Thursday, Taliban twin suicide bombers attacked a convoy of Afghan police, Kaday, outside the Afghan capital, Kabul, killing 37 people, mostly policemen, and wounding 40 others. Early counting in Australia's national election today showed a swing on the opposition Labour Party after polls closed in at least of one of the countries, the Australian Electoral Commission reported a 2.32% swing on the Labour Party on a two-party count with the coalition. Labour requires a uniform swing of about 4% to win government in the marketer electorate in Western Sydney. Labour recorded a double jutted swing with almost 10% on the vote counted. The seat is currently held by the Liberals and Australian Broadcasting Corp predicted 52% to the coalition, 45 to the Labour Party and 5 seats to the other with 48 seats on its decided with 150 in the House representative and the coalition requires 76 seats to maintain outright power otherwise it will need to form alliances with small parties and independents to get a majority. Did that the death toll from landslides and floodings in northern India has risen to 25 after rescuers found more bodies buried under debris. At least dozens were missing after the territorial rains triggered landslides with the floods in Himalayan states of Uttarakhand and Arunachal Pradesh. From 15 people have lost their lives so far at Uttarakhand and 10 were reported dead in the remote Arunachal Pradesh state. Television images showed muddy, swirling flood waters gushing it through the area, while giant boulders and rock plucked parts of National Highway. Still to come in our news bulletin. As Eid al Fitr gets closer, an active purchase movement is witnessed in Eid Habtas in various governorates of the Sultanate. وإنك لعلى خلق عظيم هكذا كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أفمن يعلم أن ما أنزل إليك من ربك الحق كمن هو أعمى إنما يتذكر أولو الألباب
Welcome back to the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. The Ministry of Finance, in coordination with bodies concerned, said that it is continuing to monitor the financial status of the Sultanate due to the decrease in oil prices. The Ministry said that the average price achieved is still considered low and the expenditure volume should be controlled. The Ministry added that the contribution of the non-oil sector to the Sultan's budget must be increased. It pointed out that the procedures taken by the government since the decrease in oil prices contributed in reducing the economic effects, adding that the government managed to reduce the public expenditure from 15 billion Omani rials in 2014 to less than 12 billion rials this year. The second Holy Quran competition was concluded at Al Barma Mosque in the Wilaya of Salala. The competition included a number of religious, cultural, and entertainment activities. It aimed at stimulating participants to memorize Holy Quran and learn explanation of Quran verses. Around 300 competitors participated in this event. The honoring ceremony for those excelled in the Holy Quran competition was presided over by His Excellency Yusuf bin Alawi bin Abdullah, Minister Responsible for Foreign Affairs. With the advent of the blessed Il Eid al Fitr, Habdas or Eid markets continue in all wilayas of the Sultanate to buy Eid requirements during the last 10 days of the holy month of Ramadan. In the wilaya of Ibri, prices varied in livestock auction of Eid Habda in the wilaya. It is also a social event that strengthened bonds among all segments of the society. Eid Habta in the Wilaya of Rostock registered a commercial movement, especially in livestock auction. It also included different Eid requirements. Omani Halwa is an essential item and symbol of hospitality during Eid days, was also sold in Rostock Habta. In the government of North Sharqiya, Eid Habta was organized in the Niaba of Sinau. Roads were crowded with cars and shops with buyers till late hours at night in preparation of the blessed Eid al-Fitr. Clothes, shoes, gifts, toys and other accessories were among items bought in the Habta. Here are the Ramadan times for tomorrow. Fajr prayers at 3.57 a.m. Mahar prayers at 7.03 p.m. Now for the general weather forecast around the Sultanate, cloudy skies will prevail over the coastal areas of the Governorate of the Far with chances of intermittent drizzle and fog. Rest of the Sultanate will have clear skies with chances of scattered rain over the Hajar Mountains and nearby areas. Winds will be easterly to north, easterly light to moderate over the coast of Sea of Oman, while the coastal areas of the Arabian Sea it will be northwestly moderate to active. Seas will be rough along the coast of the Arabian Sea with a maximum wave height of 4.5 meters and slight along the rest of the coast with a maximum wave height of 1.25 meters.
This is the Salt and the Demand Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. Syrian government shelling of a rebel held town kills 31 people in northeast Damascus. Israeli troops locked down the occupied West Bank's most populous city of Hebron. And Bangladeshi forces storm a Dhaka restaurant to end a hostage siege by heavily armed militants. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin from all of us here at the studios and the newsroom. It's good night.